So today we're going to um, give you a video and a training tip on how to bandage and the different types of bandaging. So we'll go through uh, stable bandages, travel bandages and exercise bandages. So today's model is Todd who's having a bit of a sleep in the sunshine now there you go there's todd i've got my equipment here so i've got two bandage pads and two fleece bandages so i'd use fleece bandages for stable bandages and travel bandages i personally don't really use exercise bandages but i'm going to show you i can do them some people do use fleece bandages so you can buy like the lemur um, bandages to ride in um, I think the more sort of old fashioned bandages that you'd use are more elasticated. Actually, I may have some uh, white ones, so I may try and dig them out. So I'll show you the different types. Obviously, stable bandages you'd use in the stable. Uh, reasons for using stable bandages are to keep them warm in the winter. So I do that a lot with Zeb when it gets really cold. I always bandage his legs. Uh, to keep them clean so like with Todd when we go to a show to keep him nice and clean we put them on so obviously if they have an injury you may need to bandage to keep swelling down or bandage over like if you have a um, if they've cut themselves and you have to have like a dressing on there you'll have to bandage if they've got an injury and you bandage one leg always bandage the other one so you can bandage either just front or back but if they've got one bandage on one leg to make it even always bandage the other so i'll show you stable bandages first and then go from there first of all we're going to show you a stable bandage so i've got my bandage pad here which these ones are hkm but lots of brands do them and then i've got my fleece bandage so the stable bandage basically doesn't go quite as low as a travel bandage a travel bandage goes right down to here we're going to just sort of just under the um a bit lower than the fetlock we start with the bandage pad and you want to have the bandage pad in line with the heel so then it's just above the knee and you always put the bandage to the front first and tuck it in and then the top layer comes to the back. So we're always doing everything towards the back. Then we grab our bandage and we start bandaging just below the knee. And you start the first bit of the bandage with it pointing upwards slightly and you go round once below the knee again. So you then form a triangle. You then fold the triangle down And, and then re-bandage over that bit and then you start working your way down you bandage halfway down each of these so you want to bandage halfway down so you're in even amounts and you don't want to have um, the bandages too tight or too loose so you don't want to be pulling as you go around really tight but equally if they're too loose they won't stay on so you sort of just have a constant pressure and you're making sure it's tight but just not pulling it really tight and then you go all the way down below the fetlock and then you're going to come back up and you want to make a V at the front of the bandage which I'll show you in a second these bandages aren't that long ideally you want to have the bandage once you come back up come at least halfway up but some bandages come up longer than others. You can see these are quite even halfway down, all the way down to just below the fetlock. Then we've come back up and finished there. Ideally, you want to finish there if the bandage is long enough. And then to check the tightness, you want to be able to stick a finger in. So you can clearly see I can stick a finger. There's a bit of a gap, but it's not really loose. So they're not going to come off, but it's by no means too tight. Too tight bandages are far worse than too loose. You'd rather than be too loose and come off. If they're too tight, obviously they can cut the blood circulation off. I'm now going to do a travel bandage on this side just so we can see the comparison. So it's fair there's not actually that much difference. You try and go a little bit lower. I have actually gone quite low there. Um, but basically travel bandages, obviously when you travel them, if, if you don't want to use um, travel boots or if your horse doesn't like travel boots. So Todd is okay with back travel boots now, but I've had him two years and he didn't like them to begin with. So I always had to bandage his back legs. 
Um, so the reason you go a bit lower is obviously you want to protect as much as you can when they're traveling because they're more prone to standing on themselves or catching something. It's the same principle, same pad we've got, uh, same principle that you go Ideally with travel bandages, you actually want to go lower than the heel. You probably want bigger ones so you can get different size bandages. So I'll show you in a bit. I've got little ones that are for exercising. Um, these actually are best for stable bandages. Ideally, if you had a horse that's quite careless um, when traveling um, or was prone to knock itself, you want a bit of a bigger bandage because you want it to go down past the heel a bit. Same thing again, so you always push that bit round first to the front and then the second bit goes towards the back. Bandages are quite fiddly I would say the best thing to do with bandaging is practice so whilst we're in lockdown and you've maybe not got as much to do or you're not riding your horse take this opportunity to practice because you might need to bandage if they have an injury so it's good to practice and if you have someone knowledgeable in your yard always try and get them to check the um how tight you put them on because that's really important same again we then bandage just below the knee to always towards the back of the horse you bandage um and you leave a v i don't know if you guys can see that and then you fold that down and bandage over again and then bandage halfway down I'm going to leave slightly bigger gaps just because if I'm doing a travel bandage, this bandage isn't that long. And then we do the V to come back up again. It's Todd's time to go out in the field in a minute, so he's getting a bit restless. And then come back up and we want to finish halfway. So this is our travel bandage. So it looks fairly similar, but we have gone down slightly lower here compared to that one. Um, and like I say, ideally you actually would like a longer bandage pad, so the bandage pad can sit right under the heel. I think the V is a bit clearer on this one. So you can see there, there's a V. Um, and then same up here, and then we check the pressure again. Again same sort of thing the last bandage we're going to do is an exercise bandage so for an exercise bandage we use a different bandage pad so it's a lot um, shorter because unlike the stable and travel bandages we're only bandaging from either just below the hock or the knee to the fetlocks you're not going underneath so it's a lot of a shorter distance so i'm going to um, bandage uh, his hind leg for exercise so then we can just compare same thing again you're going just below the hock or the knee and you put the bit of bandage to the front and tucked in first and then the second bit towards the back with your bandage um, when you start have the bandage on top rather than underneath like that so you always want the bandage on top so you start and you leave on a bit of a diagonal. You go round once and you leave a triangle. Hopefully we can zoom in this time so you can see because I've now got Lauren helping me. We then tuck that down like that. Bandage back round to cover it up. And then we start again going down in equal intervals. Tail a bit in the way. If you're doing this for your first time, you could just tie that in a knot so the tail's out of the way because it gets a bit in the way otherwise. So you're going just to above the fetlock. Again, you do a little bit of a V at the front and then come back up. And ideally, you're trying to get back up either to the middle or to the top. And then again, you just check that they're not too tight, that you can get a finger in easily. So we'll just go round each bandage just so you can see the difference once more. So this one is the stable bandage. So you can see that goes to just above the heel. Then we've got the travel bandage, which goes a little bit lower. I hope you can see if I do that. Goes a little bit lower than the stable bandage. Like I say, ideally you'd like um, slightly bigger bandage pads 
but that's all I've got. So, and we're going just above the knee there. Lastly, we've got the exercise bandage, which if he stands on his properly, there we go, is obviously a lot different because that goes um, to above the fetlock there.